it, maybe it's facile, but uh, I'll say it anyway. It's like opera or, or symphony. I mean, it, the novel is capacious and it needs to contain as many voices and points of view and expressions as possible. And so when I'm writing a novel, I don't think of, even a first person novel, it's not supposed to be just this one guy's point of view. It's, it's got to be, it's got to burst from the seams in my, in my estimation. What is your perspective on how point of view uh, defines the mechanics of a narrative? Well, it is the narrative. Stories are pretty much just confined, not really to objective truth, but to points of view. So depending on what point of view you choose, you're basically deciding not only what story to tell, but what, what, what content is, can be contained in that story. Any literary art is basically the art of perspective. You brought your own sparkling water. I yeah. did. I'm, did on you think? A, I'm on day five of a ten day detox, and I lost four and a half pounds in five days. Right. Wow. Right? When do you think that that's, were you going to keep that off? Do you think that that's going yeah. for good? I think so. I think so. Have, have you done this before? Well, you're in extraordinary times right now. <laughs> These are my friends. Nice to see you. Why is that the way the book opens? The mouth is a weird place. It's a cool line. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Was it always the opening line? No, it was a little farther in, like maybe page five or ten. How did you up there up? close? Uh, an editor said move it, and I said okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I should be asking the editor. How I can tell you how it works. It's very simple. I can't see it. I'm blind to it entirely. They come along. They're fresh. They've never seen it before. They they read it like it's a finished book, and they say, "There's a problem with this book. It needs to start here." And I say, "I can't see it anymore." And they say, "Trust me on this one." And I say, "Okay," and I move it, and it works out. Except when you fight. You must fight sometimes. I fight about things that they may in fact be right about, but I'm just too determined to have it this way. I mean, usually that's like cut. They say cut, and I say no, and they say, okay, it's your book. Which is always such a twisted thing to say, like, your book, you know, like, <laughs> I've given you the out, I've given you the answer, but, you know, it's your, it's, 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 it's your noose. <laughs> I'm assuming that most of the people here have not read the book. Um, so with spoilers... Always a wise decision. Always a wise decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is it that interests you on that subject? The how mechanics of narrative? Yeah, how stories get made, told, dispersed, received. When I go back and I read a play, a Shakespeare play, I think nothing's... he's done everything. It's very easy to think that when Don Quixote was written, pretty much prefigured the metafictionalists of the 60s, and every other sort of subgenre of the novel you can imagine. So it's hard to think that there's a hell of a lot of innovation going on. And then, you, and then I'll find myself plunked down in a book. The Known World by Edward P. Jones is an excellent example of this, where he has just so thoroughly possessed one particular way in which to tell stories, namely a kind of inexhaustible curiosity about the most tangential character that brings those characters to full life before your very eyes in a matter of a few efficient sentences. The full embrace of that particular narrative style, his full command of it is so, and so utterly convincing and beautiful that I just stand in awe and I think, here's a man who has managed to expand my notion of what literature is, is capable of. How he does it is an utter mystery. It is in the full possession of that narrative style. There's this continual ability to marvel at these literary arts. And I'm, I, you know, it's because mainly I don't know how it's done. <laughs>